What's happening, Blades? Notice anything different? We're trying something different today. Um, we've had a couple of upgrades, or what, you, what are supposed to be upgrades. It's really faffy. I'm not going to lie. That's probably just because I don't know what I'm doing with it half the time. But please let me know what you think of this, because it's a new way of doing things. It's not quite what we used to, if you like. Usually I just put my phone on a little tripod and record and then upload it and edit it and upload it. Well, this is a proper setup. I've got lighting and, and it's all thanks to, to you guys supporting me, subscribing to the channel, the ramblers that have come on and helped the channel, getting exclusive content to go in this early doors as well. But so, yeah, we're trying it. It's not a definite change. So those of you that like the old ways, don't worry necessarily. We're just trying a few new things. So let me know what you think. As we go along, you may like it, you may not like it, we'll see. So, a couple of bits to jump into. I mean, the, the topical one at the moment is, out of the blue, United have posted a 10-minute interview with The Prince on uh, on the website. On the, I got it through the Twitter uh, feed, but it's on, it's on YouTube and things like that if you want to catch it. He doesn't really tell us a lot of what we don't already know, I don't think personally. There's no update on the takeover. Nothing's imminent. He talked about the Dozy takeover. And during that period, from November last year, it's been the most difficult period of his life. Not just his time with the Blades, most difficult period of his life. He confirmed what we all knew already. He's skint, basically. Not skint in terms of me and you skint. Can't go out on, on a weekend skint. It's... He's borrowed everything he can to invest in the club and retain our assets. So he's nothing left to give. He says that Dozy paid him late. Didn't get quite as much as he thought he was going to get out of Dozy as per the agreement. I'm not going to comment on that. I don't know that. He's obviously much <laughs> better versed to, to comment on it. And I haven't had an update from Dozy. I'm told I'll get one when there is one. Um, but it's it's certainly not come as yet. So... Um, that's where we are. And because of what the Prince is saying, that he didn't get all the dozy money that he was expecting, it, it basically left him with a bit of a shortfall. And it was pretty much what we've all assumed. Stick or twist, really, when offers came in for Illiman and Sander. So he's he's gone for it. He's kept him. And the gamble's paid off, thankfully. And, and now he's going to reap the rewards with the sale, hopefully. But there's nothing imminent. That was the next thing he started talking about it it resonated with me when at points he said it, it with a we've finished 11 points he said this other way around so we're trying to make a positive out of it but I, I just think it's typical blades this we finished 11 points clear a third so looking at that in five years time we might look back at that and think oh well that were a breeze well really it weren't because they were saying every game were uncomfortable it felt like a grind there were only one or two games last season where it, it were enjoyable um and I thought, yeah, that's exactly how we feel as well. Obviously, he's got a lot more riding on it than we have, but it means more to us in different ways. He's, uh, he said the West Brom game will stay with him for the rest of his life um, just because of the emotion and, and what we're riding on it and everything. And I think we're all in a similar boat where he's obviously invested quite literally for different reasons. So he talked about selling the club. Um, he's, there's still talks ongoing, he said, with interested parties, but nothing imminent, and until anything changes, he's got to act as though he's going to own the club forever. Um, that's the sensible way to run it. So this is what the £20 million, I mean, they didn't touch on this, but the £20 million Eki budget, transfer budget is all about, look, at none of us, none of us want, uh, we'd all want more money. I think some people perceive it as a huge handicap before we're even off to the races, really. And I can see that. I can see, obviously, we'd want more money. We'd want more chance to sort of spend more money and bring more players in. Higher calibre, higher wages, and all this sort of stuff. I can see why people are upset about the 20 mil. And listen, if if we get taken over and we suddenly get a £200 million budget, we'll all be buzzing. But if it's going to be 20, let's, let's work with a 20. I'm sure will get the absolute most out of that. You just see what an L deal is. He's not got many wrong. 
What's it, what's he got wrong? Charlie Good, which were a loan deal, so you'd assume low cost. Rita Kadra, but we'd all have taken that deal in the summer and when he signed him, and you could see the reasons he wanted to sign him. But you look at some of success stories. I mean, Jimmy Mack, but we won't get back. So when are you coming back? Ian, I don't think. Tommy Doyle, who we've still got up for breaks now, looking more and more like it'll be a loan deal. Um, and obviously, the main one were an L in terms of signings. And there'll be more. I know Kieran Clark were unfortunate with injuries. Um, Adam Davis isn't the most overwhelming signing, but he's, he's useful and he's played his part. So I trust Eki to get the most out of this budget. And I also trust our lads to step up. And I'm not talking about Billy and Ender and Flecky and, oh, well, if they've got to stay, they've got to... No, they've got to go. They're the ones who are going to be replacing, hopefully, in my opinion. Um, but And we need better quality. But I think we'll be really difficult to beat this time round. I, I mean, we, we went out with a whimper, didn't we, when we got relegated? But those were unique circumstances. I'm not strictly going to blame COVID or Jack O'Connell or... Whatever it might be, there's loads of sort of different explanations and reasons why people think it happened like it did. But for every team that operates poorly at Premier League level, there's always a shining example. You look at teams like Fulham, Bournemouth would be a prime example. They haven't got superstars, Bournemouth. They've got higher calibre players than us. I'm not, I'm not pretending they haven't, but not by much. Their wage bill would be much higher than ours. I think we can be competitive in this league. And I've, I, I still think with 20 million and Eki making the right decisions, we can we can give it a real good go. And if we don't, if we don't, then some will say it's because we only had 20 mil. And I understand that. But what is the most important thing? And of course, it's sustainability of the football club. It's not going L for leather, S or bust, trying to stay up, chucking another 100 million at it. Look what, what, it's unthinkable as to what would have happened to us if we had not gone up. So it's the sensible long-term business approach, this. We might not like it, but at least we understand it and it's for the best thing. It's the best thing for the club. I mean, there's all sorts of tangents you can go off with that. Do you sell Illiman? So you double your transfer kitty instead of him walking out for nothing. Illiman and I, well, I in fact... That'll bring me to another point, so I'll, I'll come back to that later. An interesting point that the Prince raised was, he said the academy's got to a stage where I think we're ready to upgrade. Now, I don't think, and this is just my opinion, I don't think he means Cat 1 status. I think he means general upgrades in and around. I don't think we are... Well, we're not at a large enough site to be Cat 1. We'd have to move the whole thing. And maybe if we're sustainable in the Premier League for three, four, five years, that might be attainable. But at the moment, Academy will not be top of the list for an upgrade. So I'm assuming by that comment, and and I hope I'm wrong because I'd love investment in the Academy. It's part of building the infrastructure. But I think he meant no more leaky roofs, no more pitch issues, all that sort of thing. That's, That's my assumption of what he meant. In terms of planning for next season... The signings that we're looking at are going to be two, they're going to fit two profiles. And it's no surprise, it's high ish level loans. And I say high ish because obviously we can't be paying, you know, six figures weekly salaries, but it's it's good Premier League prospects from, from the big clubs getting decent loans in. And then he, he almost said, Free signings, it, we're on the tip of his tongue, but that's that's what he's talking about. We're going to have to wheel and deal. We're going to have to be on blower to Harry Redknapp and ask for a few favours as to how how do you get him, it done under the table and stuff. So for me, I, I mean, there's players out there we've talked about. Two months ago, we were talking about Ryan Manning. He's linked to Leeds United. If they go down, I, I mean, if they stay up, they might try and get him. They're not going to stay up. If they, you know... He's a good player, and I, I think Premier League football will be the pull. And if he's free, and I get that nobody's free, but I'd rather pay him half a million sign-on bonus than, you know, Ryan Giles paying seven, eight million 
because yeah, Ryan Giles you might prefer, but for the the budget we've got, you've got to weigh it up, haven't you? And be sensible about these things. So, and I'm sure Hickey will be. Um, we'll see where that goes. But he was basically saying it's loans and freeze that we're looking at all low level transfer fees, which we all knew were coming. Another thing he said, which which resonated with me, was that he watches games back, but only when we've won. I think we've talked about this on a stream before, that if we win, it's great, you're buzzing. You want to re-watch a game, you want to talk about a game, you want to come and watch YouTube channels, you want to jump onto Ramble and sort of interact about how it's gone. And if we haven't won, then yeah, you want to moan about it, but then you just pretty much want to shut off. If you don't like me, I can't, I can't watch any football that weekend then. It even it even stretched to when when Wendy's turned Peterborough over. I couldn't watch anything then. I can't listen to any not the top twenty or anything like that that I like to do because they're all going to be talking about how great Wednesday are, and I just can't be doing it. So yeah, it made me laugh that Prince said he doesn't watch games back when we've lost, but he does like to watch back the games when we've won. So I, I, it struck a chord with me. Nathan Mingham's brought out his latest notebook on Examiner Live. You can catch that in the webpage that I'll link below if I remember. Sorry if I don't, Nath. But in it, he talks about the Illiman and Die contract situation. And it jumped out at me because I don't know who's holding out hope for Illiman to stay. But I can guarantee you, guarantee you, he will not be here this time next year. He'll not be a, a blade. There's, there's no doubt about that. And and I've that's not just an opinion. That's come from very good sources. And you can you can sort of say it's his agent steering him. You can say, ultimately that's what's going to happen with his career. Is the superstar in he and he's too good for us. So we've got a serious decision to make. Do we cash in now and double his transfer budget and try and become more sustainable? Or do we keep him and let him potentially leave for free? Then obviously if we get relegated, it's a double whammy, isn't it? Because you keep him with the, the aim of him being the one to pull you over the line to stay up and get you that another 100 mil or whatever it is we're going to get. But, I mean, cards on the table, I'd keep him. But Nath's proposing that... Um, if Ndai wants to move now and his agent will get 20, 20, and his agent claims they'll get 20, 25 million fee for him because he's got a year left, he'd probably pull more with a longer contract. Then why not just sign him up to a new contract with that as a release clause? Well, I think, and this is just my opinion, Nathan's entitled to his, obviously, but I think he's missed the trick in terms of they're not on about leaving for a fee. I don't think Illiman wants to go. I think Illiman wants a year with us as the main man. He's going to play every game, probably majority of minutes now that he's got over that cramp that he had the season before last. And hopefully he's going to fire us to safety and then he'll get a move. And it won't be with a fee. It'll be with a huge signing on fee instead of a transfer fee to a club. So yeah, he will get 20 million in his back pocket rather than at a Tottenham or a Marseille or wherever he ends up going. I mean, he could go higher than that for me. But Illiman's not staying beyond next season. I think we've more chance with Sander. But, you know, we have to have a long-term plan here as to what we're going to do. As I say, I think we keep him. We've got to keep him to give ourselves a fighting chance. Because without him... I don't think we'd have got out of the championship. So, a lot of work to do and a lot of, we don't owe him anything. So, yeah, I just thought that were interesting because I disagree, basically, with what Nace's proposing. I'd love it if, it if that happened. If they're willing to sign a... a con and I've proposed it myself and I've, I've proposed it in certain circles and it's been, I've been shot down. Look, he's not going to sign a new deal. If he were going to sign a new deal, it would signed for Everton when they were offering to treble his wages with us or what we treble what we could offer as his maximum so, you know it's not about the short term with Illiman it's about where he's looking at 10 years down the line where's he going to go 
and, and we'll owe him nothing, particularly if he saves us from relegation. Just what a player. So, it, it, again, this is from Nate's article. Interesting to read. The players all went to Vegas, obviously, um, and they're now away with their partners, from what I gather. The staff and their partners all went to Budapest instead, and they've been getting together on an evening and stuff and, and during day. And So it sounds like it's been a really good crack, and, it, and that's been Eki's philosophy of getting everybody together harnessing that sort of team family bond if you like because he's, he's just good isn't he he's good I, I mean I, I could do another video on Eki because he's really turned me around I'm not blinded by by things I think he's got his faults but I'm certainly a believer now I'm, I'm very confident in him going into the new season and that, that don't mean I think we'll definitely survive but I think we're in good hands. And just another update as well in terms of staffing. Jared Dublin might be a name you've heard. He's the fella that left us to join Reading as their chief scout or head of recruitment or whatever the, the title is nowadays. So he left our scouting department with Mitch to go over to Reading. <laughs> Not sure how that's going for him. <laughs> Sorry, Jared, but, you know. So we've had a gaping hole, as, as most of us are aware, in that scouting department and couldn't bring anybody in, couldn't sign any contracts, couldn't do anything. So we've suffered there a little bit and we, we, I'm hoping we're not behind, but how can't we be really unless they've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes? Well, it's been determined now and Nace confirmed it in his article. One of the analysts is going to come over and work closely with, with Mitch and then they're going to advertise the analysts substantive post if you like so a little bit of a move around and it's it's pointing a little bit more towards data driven which is obviously the Brentford model the Brighton model it's how we found an L it, it's exciting to think that that might be the way we're going as a as a scouting department I have to stand up for the old eye test but Mitch is old school as well so I'm sure he will bring that element of, you know, I need to see him first or whatever it might be. <laughs> so, yeah, positive for me, that. Really pleased with it. And that'll be it for me. I thought, there were, I, to be honest, I thought retained lists were going to be out. So I've been holding off for a day and sort of, well, it might be out today or it might be out tomorrow. And then we can obviously have a, a scrum down on what's happened with retained lists, whether we agree, whether we disagree. I don't think there'll be many surprises in there. The only maybes for me, Ben Osborne, Jack O'Connell, he's likely to be released, but, you know, by some miracle, maybe. But again, we've talked about this. And Billy now, Billy's into the sort of grey area, isn't he? I thought he were well gone, but I think there's been a bit of a U-turn on there, and it's 50-50 now. So we'll see what happens when return list comes out. We're away for weekend, for Bank Holiday at Caravan now, so if it does come out and I can get on, then I'll get some news to you, but I won't be coming to your front car like I did last time, so... We'll see what we can get. But we've got Wi-Fi sorted now, so it might not be too bad. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Really appreciate it. If you could like, share, subscribe. We're trying to get to 2,000 before season starts. That's my challenge that I've been set, and I think we can do it. I mean, we're, we're something like 40-odd or 1,500 at the moment, and, and I think there's mo we're more than able to do that. I know there's people watching that aren't subscribed because analytics tell you on your videos. So if you could do us a favor and subscribe, that'd be great. And let me know what you think of this new new format. Does it work for you? Does it not? You might not have noticed much difference, but you know we're trying to improve things. We're trying to improve things all the time. I built myself like an overlay, which I, I thought would always look really good, and then I could have a lot of information going up and down. Tried it; it looks awful, absolutely awful. So everything I've sort of had in my head, when you pour it out, it don't always work. So we might end up going back to just a mobile phone on a stand. Any feedback's appreciated as long as it's PG. Come on, you red and white wizards. 
Oh, the blades. Just a little bit of a bonus clip for you. Thank you for staying on for those of you that catch this because not everybody will. Some of them have clicked off already, I know they will. Um, I don't like it. I don't like that layout, I've watched it back. Let me know what you think though. I mean, we'll keep trying stuff. All we're trying to do is improve it, but it's back to the drawing board for me, I think, unless I can get some sort of better camera. It were a bit blurry, I think. It weren't quite as engaging as, as my phone is, like I'm recording on now. So we'll see. So thanks for sticking around till the end. And if you're not already, please subscribe. Don't just take my word for it. Take Cammy's. Hi, I'm Cammy Chris Kamara. If you would like to listen to a true fan's perspective on the club, subscribe to my good friend Jim Smith's podcast, The Blades Ramble, right now. Let's go, Blades, man.